Um, so this is Deputy Secretary of Defense Hicks. Uh, we're going to do 10 minutes. We're on record. We're going to be on camera. She's going to uh, give a brief opening statement, and then we'll do a couple of quick questions and then uh, move on. So it's a short one, but ma'am, I'll sure. turn it over to you. Thanks. Absolutely great. Well, thanks to everybody for coming out uh, today. We've been focused here at the uh, Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. Uh, where there's a huge amount of improvements underway that we think will be helpful to the workforce that's here and, of course, really vital to national security. So I really want to thank Senator Rono, Congressman Case, who were here today. Um, but this is part of a longer um, uh, set of trips I've been doing back and forth to Hawaii in large part because of its incredible importance to national security. And I uh, really want to thank the state uh, leadership as well who've worked really closely with us. Um, the people of Hawaii are part of this workforce here at the shipyard, and that's just emblematic of all that the people of Hawaii do in support um, and working alongside the Department of Defense. So we're really focused on how do we make sure we're responsible um, uh, partners in that, and uh, a lot of the investments that we're doing here are a good example. This is the largest investment in uh, a military construction project in DOD history that we're doing here, about $3.6 billion. Uh, just into this shipyard and then overall over the next five years including this year there's uh, more than six billion dollars worth of military construction going on throughout Hawaii so again those are just um, examples of the ways in which we're collaborating uh, to really bring the workforce jobs at peak here we think there'll be up to 800 jobs just at this shipyard uh, and that is we, we were told today uh, more than 90 percent of that is Hawaiian uh, workforce. Um, so let me stop there and, and turn it over to Eric. Ma'am, we'll go left to right. So Kevin Nodell with the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Sure. Hi. Yeah. Um, I guess we can start with, you know, big investment. Yeah. But, um, you know, some of the members of the delegation have voiced concerns that current draft legislation doesn't have sufficient funding for, for the next year to keep it on schedule. Is that something that they've raised with you? Do you share those concerns? Um, how do you feel on the funding that you guys are getting to get this through? Sure. So we're very comfortable with the funding we got in the, the year that we're in, fiscal year 23, and the, the delegation's been really supportive of that. For fiscal year 24, we're going through that budget process right now, and things are complicated right now on Capitol Hill. Our biggest concern, with it, which we do share with the delegation, is making sure the appropriations actually come and that they're on time, that we avoid uh, a, a continuing resolution or even worse, a government shutdown. So we've been really trying alongside them to uh, make the point that projects like this cannot proceed on time and on schedule um, unless we can get those appropriations. So that's been our focus. Okay. Sabrina Bowden with uh, Hawaii, Hawaii Public, Public Radio. Radio. Yeah, so I think you've heard a lot about timeline and kind of outdated, antiquated technology and facilities here, um, like 20 years for temporary housing. Yeah, and do, yeah, sure. I think part of your questions were really about Spitting kind of the quality of life and how do we make you know, these dilapidated conditions and make it better for the workforce. Can you talk to me a little bit about your initial thoughts, if the answers were adequate for you? Yeah, yeah I think the answers were, were, um, were good. I think they're thinking from the perspective of the workforce, both in terms of, we talked a lot about productivity, right? So quality of life, obviously that's good for the workforce, but what's good for the workforce is good for uh, productivity. Better parking, um, faster commute times, making sure they have, you know, bathrooms and ventilation and places to eat, and all of that seems to be built into how they're thinking through this. I think my biggest concern, and, and you probably heard this, is schedule so that we can move to that world, to that reality, as quickly as possible. That's going to help us get submarines out, you know, um, repaired and out the door and maintained. Um, but it's also going to make sure that that workforce uh, is having, you know, a quality of life that they deserve. Patrick Tucker, Defense One. Uh, yes, thank you. One of the things that we learned about today during the brief was how this uh, new construction is meant to be adaptive to uh, climate futures uh, and anticipating a sea level rise. In the uh, House passed version of the NDAA, there's a block on money for environmental research for DOD. So, Um, so, it's very destructive. 
we have to make sure that our military can operate in all kinds of conditions. And those conditions can be under fire, um, those conditions can be a loss of communication, meaning cyber attacks, but also those conditions can be everything from wildfire to sea level rise to drought. Um, and we know this, and we have to learn how to operate that way. So I think anytime we see um, you know, challenges to the military just trying to be as resilient as possible and as effective as possible in the range of futures that we face, I think that's destructive um, to the military's capability and to its readiness. And we're all about making sure we're ready. We're all about making sure those uh, war fighters downrange here in the Indo-Pacific, of course, the region of greatest concern for us right now, that we can, um, you know, deliver deliver that military effect that they're called on to be able to do. And we have to be able to do that in, in you know, in the face of climate change. So, yes, it's a challenge. Thank you. Ma'am, that's, that's it. Okay. Do you have anything else you'd no, like to add? No, thanks all. Okay. I really appreciate it, and thanks for coming out today. This is a great project. Cool. Thank you, yeah. ma'am. Thank you.